All right, I wanted to talk a little bit about um about um uh, Islam. Uh, I mean, a part of my story is really phenomenal from from how I process it, and um, the part of the story I'm talking about is me growing up um sort of Palestinian and um, one day walking into the world and realizing that I was the only Palestinian from India. Um, I thought that there was Hindu Muslim unity and everybody was Gandhi's Indian and I guess in America the Middle East plays out everywhere and I didn't know that at the time but it seems to there's just the Middle East playing out all of America I mean I didn't know that until until I, I learned it later on in life but um that's what it appears to me. Uh, but I grew up sort of when this happens in, in Palestine, and um, uh, and I guess I was the only one. And um, so I, I was always raised in one India under Mahatma Gandhi. What uh, what India would be uh, if what the world would be sort of under Gandhi and, and in India. I mean, I had it extending all the way to Palestine. So I always thought of Palestine as, as India, and. Um, and we thought of Israel under Mahatma Gandhi also. So we were sort of Gandhi's Indians and applied that philosophy of a nation under Mahatma Gandhi to Israel as well. And I walked into the world one day and I realized that I had never met a Muslim from India in America. So I did want to talk about that part of the, the, the world, that era, that time when India was one because that was the India, that was the world I had grown up in. And in Shirdi, um, in Shirdi, uh, you know, Shirdi Sai Baba had uh, lived in a mosque, and I smoked cigars for Shirdi Sai Baba because Shirdi Sai Baba had um, smoked a chillum, and I s smoked cigars just to sort of establish it that uh, nicotine is not a, the, something of the devil, but when used uh, to thy own self, be true is okay. Nicotine, caffeine, uh, cannabis, cannabis. So, um, so when Shirdi, Shirdi Sai Baba lived in a mosque, and, um, and, uh, you know, so he was living in a mosque, but he was an avatar of Lord Shiva, which did what to Hinduism and Islam? It put them on the same plane and inter intertwined them. And, uh, you see the green on the Indian flag is, from what I understand, for Islam, and this Buddha, the Wheel of Dharma is uh, for, for Buddhism. I designed the Wheel of Dharma too, and uh, I have uh, the Wheel of Dharma tattooed on my arm from the Indian flag. So, so that's uh, where I figure it in on the Indian flag. That's where I appear. And um, so it's about Hindus, it's about Buddhism and Islam, and um, they are the same, really. Buddhism and Islam are the same when they coexist. So when Islam and Buddhism coexist, they are the same. They're just two different paths. But Buddhism is like the 12 steps, and it's some shruti. I, my company's called Under the Bodhi Tree because of a spiritual experience that I had, and it's just some shruti, some truth that was handed down to Lord Buddha, or not Lord Buddha, but to Siddhartha from uh, Lord Narayan. And... Uh, that truth is uh, the, the eight noble, the four noble truths and the eightfold path. I think I've done a lot of Buddhist practice or a fair amount, but I've read very little Buddhist theory. So I, uh, I'm reading the Bible right now, and or the New Testament at least, and I'll move on to a book I have on Buddhism next. But I'm also reading Discovery of India and a book by Karen Armstrong that I've put down and my reading has to pick up but um but it's about buddhism and islam coexisting and uh being looked at as the same or b b jainism and and islam or to look at them the same when when the world coexists or really hinduism and islam when you coexist when all all religions are looked at as sort of the way i describe religion is that when you google something on a map and you ask for directions you um you get all these different routes. You know, you take one route, you take another route, and it tells you how much time it takes, tells you how many miles there are. But um, that's all religion really is, is two different 
sort of routes or paths to the same same destination. And um, Hinduism and Islam are, I mean, they're, they're looked at it the same. Um, in 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 because of Shirdi, they're looked at as the same. Hinduism and Islam are the same. The same. But there's also this relationship between Hindu between Islam and Buddhism, Islam and Jainism, Islam and Sikhism. Uh, and uh, but Islam and and, and, and Buddhism are well I mean Buddhism isn't really a religion it's more of a philosophy there's no talk about God in it but once well I'm I'm incorporating the teachings of Sri Buddha into Vedanta making the uh, Buddhist text Upanishads and all the liturgy to just be developed the 100 day names the Arti you know all the the bells and whistles. So, um, I'm, I, I know. So I'm doing that as the Nar Nataraj avatar Sri Shiva, and citing Buddha, the Nar Narayan avatar of Sri Vishnu. So, um, so I did want to talk about Buddhism and uh, Islam, but I guess I am I am Lord Shiva too, like Shruti Sai Baba, and and um, I really do work to. Establish Hinduism and Islam as two sort of different paths you take to the same destination, like two different uh, sets of directions to one destination that you see on uh, on Google with different miles and different ETAs.